Hey folks, Brian here. So I'm continuing my camera crawler build. Remember to subscribe to my channel and if you enjoy the videos, please do hit the like and leave comments in the section below. So this one is going to be about the drive shaft. We're just going to go straight to cut stuff open and get it done. Um, but we have, uh, as we get a little deeper into this, we start to get into some really cool stuff. Are you kidding me? These are plastic. I'm kind of disappointed in that. There's so much that's really nice about this kit, and that's not one of the things. I mean, it just looks cheap. Alright, well, we'll see. We'll see. I'm trying to keep an open mind on this. These are going to be probably a lot more complicated than they look. Oh yeah, it's got some little pseudo U-joints in here. These are going to be a pain in the ass to put in there. But I still am a little surprised to see plastic for the drive shafts. Alright, so we're going to just take all this and push it over here. Before we do that, we're going to take all the leftovers from the transmission and sweep them into the box. Alright. So, we'll start with that. And then... So each one of these gets so we're actually set that like this. So we're going to set one side off to the side, and then we're going to try and decipher how this goes together. All right. Okay, so no, the U joints are nice. I just don't know why the rest of the drive shaft could be made like this. Okay, so we need M three eight. Forty fours. Okay. So, little thread lock through a number one, which is a short one, and it goes in through the spline side all the way in. Gets one of these, and these uh, slip in. All 
All right, so that's one. And then we do the same thing here. We stick this all the way in. And then this one goes on this end. size, so then these go like this. Alright. hundred percent sure what the hell is going on here, but I have a pretty good idea. So this is something that would make Houdini proud. And we're going to use the black grease as a cheater. So what we're going to do... Use black grease to hold that still. And then we're going to come in with this, followed by one of these. And if that doesn't succeed, we will come back and use a different one. Okay, so that's that. And then one of these goes over top of it. Like that. And that that's part of the secret right there. All right, so This is a clever little design. The grease will work its way around. Alright, so... I'm just lining the holes up and then putting this together. And there is a big and a small side to this, and this big side lines up with that. And we'll we'll see that again later. Okay, and at that point that's one drive shaft assembled. So we're gonna set it off to the side.
compete. So what you're looking at here is this actually slots into here. Um, it's just easier to hold everything like this. And then it'll just naturally draw itself in. This definitely wins an award for complication. We'll see how well it works. So at this point, well, that's interesting. So you just want to make note of where the holes are and orient that to the side. And then use the grease as glue. Wipe the excess on your pants. That will make your, whoever does your laundry will be just thrilled with you. There we go. And then line the big side up. It's really that that's kind of an interesting way to do this. Jury's out on if this is the most durable way. I have a hunch there's aftermarket parts for this. I'd like to see a little bit better fit with these pins. But, you know, considering that the cost of this is quite reasonable compared to full size vehicle parts, yeah, I guess I'll just live with it. So that's the second one put together. Sweep all this off the side, check to make sure we greased everything. Now we need the transmission where we're going to attempt to install. So we'll orient this. And then we're going to spin this because we're glutton for punishment. the longer one and we want the longer piece towards the transmission and then we're going to slide that through there and then this lock nut 
gets thread locked, but it does the it's the pin as well. And I have to give them credit. This is clever. I can only imagine how many failures they went through to arrive at this design. And that will snug in there. Unfortunately, it leaves this loose, but thats I have a hunch that problem is going to solve itself in a few minutes. So now we're going to turn this around, and again, we want the longer side towards that. This isn't nearly as easy to do, so we'll just set that off to the side. But it will work. these it does have a nice uh, depth to these set screws so that's a set pin is probably what you really call it that in there. Still spins. And I'll push that back on there. And then we're just going to pick this up and set it off to the side. Sweep all that to the top. Now we get to the fun part, where we're going to start attaching the axles. Alright, so, So it calls for the front axle to go on first, so we'll set that to the side. That's the rear axle. We'll bring the front axle over, and we're going to find our screws first. So we've got one of these locks, lock pins, and then we need two small and two long. Oh wow, they're threaded rods. That should be a pain in the ass. So, we're going to start here. And let me spin these. Push these in here. I'm not seeing how that's going to go together, but 
Maybe it knows something I don't yet. So that's in. And you want to watch this doesn't come off because bad things will happen. It will fly apart. And I promise it's going to be more of a pain in the ass to work on when it's apart. In fact, we're going to solve this problem right now. Alright, and now we need to extract these, which go in these slots here, and again, so you guys can see what I'm doing. It's a pretty tight fit, so you gotta kind of work with it to get it to go in here. And that's good, because you don't want it to be a loose fit. And we're just going to leave that pinned while we work on this one. Because we can always tighten it in a few seconds. Which isn't good, so we gotta thread that back in there. There's a heck of a lot of travel in that. Alright. But that suddenly became really, quite impressively, 
stiff. So now we have to do the other side. I don't feel like I have a Chinese finger trap here. So I'm going to simplify this by putting it together separate because I think this is actually easier. So if you put the outer sleeve on backwards, you won't be able to get the screw in. And that's what that looks like. All right, good. So now that's together. And those are in the right spots. Those need to be up like that. That's right, no, that's backwards. So those still need to be up like that. And I find this easier to do upside down, so I'm going to flip around upside down. And this is why I like to do this upside down. I just don't get what holds those in. I guess all will be revealed to me eventually. I just don't feel like there's anything holding that in. And then this is just a repeat of what we did on the other side, where we're going to pin one and then pin the other, and then we'll secure the pins by screwing them in. There's one. So, go ahead and screw this in now. And it's beginning to actually look like it could go somewhere.
is it. Next is the frame, so I'm going to pause here. Um, you know, assembling the drive shafts and uh, putting the uh, axles on is this video. Thanks for watching.